These are the biggest video games coming out in 2023. This list is going from five all the way up to one, but we have to cover some honorable mentions because there's so many video games to cover, we had to do it. The first of those honorable mentions is, of course, the Dead Space remake, which is coming out on January 27th. Listen, it's been over a decade since we last saw Dead Space hit our shelves. I would certainly be agreeing with you if you thought that EA was actually going to be making a Dead Space 4, but no, they're just doing a remake of the original. If you've never heard of this series before and you're planning on starting again, it basically focuses on an engineer called Isaac Clarke, who has never skipped leg day a day in his life. Once he receives a distress signal from a mining rig, he ends up stumbling into the worst case of the halo flood on steroids that you could ever imagine. It's a sci-fi horror survival classic that's inspired on some of the biggest sci-fi movies of its age from Ridley Scott to John Carpenter's. And it's been giving gamers nightmares for well over a decade and a half. This remake is going to be available on Steam and I believe on console as well. I am very much excited to play it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Speaking of horror survival games, another honorable mention is the remake of Resident Evil 4. That one will be dropping on console and PC on March 24th. In my humble opinion, Resident Evil 4 is in the top two or maybe even top three games for this entire franchise. So you know that I am damn excited to see the remake, especially from what we saw in Resident Evil Village. I am very excited to see what new mechanics and breakthroughs we can make in this installment of the franchise. With this entry, we finally get back to the return of Leon Kennedy from Resident Evil 2, trying to rescue the president's daughter from a Spanish village that has been infected by the disease. Plus, we already know from Capcom that there's going to be new bosses, new locations, and new mechanics. We'll just have to wait and see what those are. I wasn't going to add this video into the honorable mentions, but after watching some people play it at the Game Awards, I am damn sure that this has a spot on this list. And I'm talking about Diablo 4, which is releasing on June 6. Diablo 4 is slated to be one of the biggest releases from Activision Blizzard coming out this year. This time, we are going to be fighting Lilith, the daughter of Mephisto, and she obviously wants to set the world ablaze. The biggest difference between this one and the previous entries is the fact that this one is going to be online only and open world. So it means that PvP experiences are actually going to be available. The only problem is that the crux of video game existence is actually going to be popping up because microtransactions for cosmetics is going to be introduced once again. Does that mean that the microtransactions will extend above and beyond the cosmetics and into actual items that give you an advantage in game? We will have to wait and see. Finally, the last member of the honorable mentions is of course Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. The release date for this one is yet to be announced, but this trailer had everybody going crazy at the Game Awards. Obviously, people are going to be beyond excited to see this come to life because the studio behind it is from software, which in case you've been living under a rock is the studio that brought us the most recent game of the year, Elden Ring. After beating out God of War Ragnarok in the most intense game of the year race that we have seen since 2018, I'm excited to see what they can do with Armored Core. Fun fact, the director of this entry is going to be Masaru Yamamura, who was the lead designer for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is my favorite form software game. We haven't seen an Armored Core game hit the shelves in over 10 years and two console generations, so this could be some people's first experience with the franchise. I'm keeping my eye out because if we're introducing Soulsborne mechanics into this bad boy, it is going to be worth checking out. With all of that out of the way, the question is simple. Which are the biggest games of 2023? At number five, I have Assassin's Creed Mirage. Ubisoft might be on its last legs, with record lows when it comes to the profit and everybody distrusting their game development abilities. But according to them, Assassin's Creed Mirage is set to bring their blockbuster franchise back to its old days of glory. The initial report stated that this is going to be a more linear, stealth-focused game, which takes you back to the legacy that we've built through Altair's reign in Assassin's Creed. I was personally a really big fan of Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins, especially with the RPG mechanics that were built into those. But in this one, you can fully expect the three original pillars of Assassin's Creed to be front and center, which are the stealth, the parkour, and of course, the assassinations. This one is taking place in Baghdad around the 9th century, around 20 years before the events of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Which, if I'm being completely honest with you, I did not have the strength to finish it. It got repetitive, I was just bored. On the plus side, there's supposed to be three different Assassin's Creed projects on the slate at the current moment. We have Assassin's Creed Jade, which I believe is a mobile game, Assassin's Creed Hex, and of course, Assassin's Creed Red. That one in particular is the one that excites me the most because we are finally going to be taking Assassin's Creed to Japan. 
Japan. We still don't have a release date for Assassin's Creed Mirage, but you can hit that subscribe button with the naughty bell on, because I'll be dropping all of the updates as soon as they come out. At number four, we have none other than Hogwarts Legacy. This could be one of the more controversial and yet most exciting video game releases of the entire year. So far, it is one of the biggest third-party releases of the year, no question, hitting number one on Steam wish lists. And it's already in the top three for most pre-ordered games in 2023. The release date is slated for February 10th of 2023, but the game has already had its fair share of controversy. There was a huge amount of commentary online stating that people that play the game or even play it on stream should be boycotted because the royalties of the game are going to be directly supporting J.K. Rowling, who, if you didn't know, is the original author of the Harry Potter books. She has been criticized heavily over the past couple of years in the public eye for her views on the LGBTQ plus community, especially involving transgenders. I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that major publications like NBC News and Forbes have already reported that this game is going to have the ability to separate body type and voice from the two available genders during character creation, which for some people was positive and for others was seen as a cop-out. But if we're strictly talking about the game, this one is going to be letting you create your own character and be sorted into one of the four houses at Hogwarts. For the very first time ever, we are going to have a choose-your-own adventure open world game within Hogwarts, giving you the freedom to become a dark wizard or become the hero, however you decide to play it. I saw in a report that it's going to be taking over 170 hours to complete the full story and explore everything that you can in this open world environment. With that said, I've also been online for the commentary on the reports that you're going to be able to land curses and forbidden spells on your classmates. So this could easily just turn into the pre-game lobby for GTA 6. There seems to be some open world fatigue between gamers, but with the discoveries and hidden secrets that we're probably going to find at Hogwarts, going on Quidditch runs, as well as making potions, you can get lost in this world by default, and I, for one, am all in. The final games on this list are going to blow your mind, so if you want to see my full takes on those, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the video because it is live right now. At number three, we have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, I know this is a controversial pick at number three because Zelda Tears of the Kingdom could have easily been at the number two spot or even at number one. Nintendo has been extremely careful not letting a single spoiler break through the cracks, which is exciting to know because the game's release date is May 12th and I still have no idea what we are going to get. Whenever a new Zelda game comes out, the gaming industry just freaks out and goes into overdrive, especially from what we saw in Zelda Breath of the Wild. All we know from the initial reports is that there's going to be an expanded traversal system, which means that we're going to be able to explore Hyrule in ways that we didn't do before. The only thing that I'm a little bit hesitant on is that I do not trust the Switch's capabilities at this point. After watching the atrocities that we got from mainline games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I don't know if this can run at 1080p, much less run at 60 frames per second. I wouldn't be surprised if it's locked at 30, but I live to be proven wrong, so Nintendo, give me your best shot. Numero dos and number one were really tough to place, but at number two, I decided on Jedi Survivor. This one is dropping on March 17th on all major consoles and PC. It is the highly anticipated sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. We are finally reprising our role as Cameron Monaghan's staple character Cal Kestis, who is a survivor of Order 66. Just for context, this game is taking place five years after Jedi Fallen Order and ten years after Revenge of the Sith. This game's trailers also introduced a mysterious character in a back to tank that has the entire Star Wars community intrigued. I personally want to see what the expansions are on the fighting mechanics, the companions, and obviously the easter eggs and details that connect this game to the mainline movies and TV shows within the Star Wars universe. I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so I'm pre-ordering my copy, but before we get to number one, I want to have a challenge. Can you guess what number one is? I'm gonna give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Leave your guess in the comments down below. Are you ready? Let's go. At numero uno, of course, the one and only Spider-Man 2. Yes, I may be biased because Miles Morales is my favorite Spider-Man and my favorite superhero, but everybody has been waiting patiently for the return of Spider-Man after Spider-Man PS4. This one is going to be releasing on the PlayStation 5 sometime in 2023. According to the Direct and other major reports, there are some encouraging updates regarding the release date for this game because it was initially 
officially slated to be coming out in 2024. The original Spider-Man PS4 broke records for superhero themed games and was a massive success on the PS4. This one actually seems to have even more promise after we finish Spider-Man Miles Morales and from what we saw in the trailers. For example, we're going to be seeing Peter Parker team up with Miles Morales doing combos on different enemies, we have the huge reveal that Venom is going to be in the game, and the person that narrates the actual trailer is Craven the Hunter, who of course is looking for somebody to challenge him. On top of that, around December of 2022, we actually saw a live listing for the game in the PlayStation Store. It was up for a couple of minutes on the UK PlayStation Store, but they took it down immediately, so that gives us a couple of clues. Don't be surprised if we get some new info on the release date for this title. After all the delays and the mainline issues with production that we've seen across the industry, don't be surprised if we see something in Q3 or Q4 of 2023 when it comes to a release date. Yes, I know, you made it to the end of the video and you're wondering, where the hell is Alan Wake 2, the Final Fantasy remake, or even Suicide Kill the Justice League? I'm just gonna say, besides Final Fantasy, I don't think any of those games packs the punch of any of the other games that we mentioned on this list. With that said, that is all it from me, so I want to know, let me know which game you are most excited for in the comments down below.